Welcome to the StockMatter.com studios here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I'm your StockMatter, Brian Johnson. I'm making professional trading simple. Uh, update a day, obviously. Things screaming from the get-go. These are difficult days to catch up with once they do that in the morning. And I sent an email out to my subscribers a few hours into the session saying, more than likely you're going to end up sitting on your hands the rest of the day. There's usually not a whole lot to do. These things move very, very quickly. Then they base or consolidate. We, I guess you could have played it down, actually, to be honest with you. There was a little bit of a pullback there, which led to some points uh, available, but not really a whole lot of trading to do. Some single equities were some good trades today, but you would have had to catch them early. These gap ups are difficult not only to play from a indice standpoint, but from a stock standpoint as well. You know, once they've gapped up, especially if they gap up above your entry, where do you get in? Where do you move? What do you do? Uh, so in most cases, you just sit and you wait until it breaks another level of support or resistance and take it from there. So we're seeing maybe a little bit of Yuletide cheer come into the markets today. Uh, people getting ready for Christmas, uh, Apple, those type of things should technically kind of start to rise right now. They've been up quite a ways, though, so it's anybody's guess at this point which direction they'll ultimately end up in December. But looking at the market, you can see this new uh, on the Dow. I have a new channel in here that I believe I can put in now. I like this channel line. We'll see if this holds going forward on a 60-minute basis. This now looks very similar to a daily chart. Notice the big run up into a rising channel. This is weird because these look like big bear flags ultimately uh, when looked at them kind of in this context. Now if we look at it on a daily you can see the same type of thing. And that is run up and then move up slowly in a big giant bear flag looking. Now we've seen these in the past. If you guys go back to March time frames uh, even before that, we see we see a lot of these where it runs up hard and then it kind of moves slowly to the upside as such. Very common. And they, you know, of course, will all resolve down. It's just a matter of when. This one here has really been on a really good, uh, a really good tear all the way, go, uh, all the way from August. So, you know, when they reverse is anybody's guess, we just continue to watch the support and resistance areas. Just notice that now the 60 minute looks like a big fractal of the daily. And also recognize that we are back up to this upper trend line on the Dow, which up to this point has held very well in the past as resistance. So where, we're at, uh, where we are is actually a very defensible short if you're looking at taking a play on it over the next couple days. You can get in to the short side here with a very small stop just up above, I'd say, the 10.5 mark. So 10,005 even 555. I wouldn't want to be a part of that anymore. The high today was 10,495, and I think a break of 10,500 could push some more bears to cover. So uh, you could actually, you know, get in with a 50, 60 point stop right here, and uh, you know, just see how things go. All right. So moving on, if we look at the Nasdaq from a 60 minute time scale, you can see here that we broke this trend line on the gap up this morning. So now we sit and wait for another break upwards. Uh, you can see this, of course, uh, not quite as strong as the Dow go figure. Hasn't been for a while. Break up over 1800, though. Probably takes us back to 1815. And then once again on the NASDAQ, a break over this level. I'd be looking for a long, a very defensible place to go long up and over this area. Um, curious today, though, that we didn't actually make new highs. If I skip back here on the daily the Dow. Uh, now the Dow went up and over once again making new highs but as we get to the S&P you'll notice that we didn't make new highs. Same with the NASDAQ. So just waiting and watching could be. The Dow has been the kind of quote-unquote the leader so far. The Dow has been the strongest and when it makes new highs it seems that a lot of the other stocks follow eventually. Maybe that's what we'll see here. Wait for breaks over 1800 and then again over 1815. Those are your two long trades on the NASDAQ. Otherwise look for re support back here at the 1775 area and then this uh, this trend line here uh, that's coming down that will probably also act as some support. NASDAQ on a daily gap down close below bulls 
bring it right back up again, right back into this rising wedge that we're watching. So once again, going forward, those areas I gave you on the 60 minute, also watch them over this upper trend line here. A break above that 1815 mark is one more reason for the NASDAQ to get bullish. Weekly, don't care about it's Monday, SPX 60 minute. Look at this huge run up. Notice how it, see, this is what I'm saying, didn't make a new high. Basically a double top at this point. Not a confirmed double top, but we do have a potential double top in the makings. However, little tiny pullback right into uh, support has to be looked at as bullish at this point. So we have to proceed as it is, and the charts are really looking bullish. Uh, they did the same thing here, and then and then dove straight down. Maybe we get that same type of move, but I'm guessing that with the pullback here looking bullish, 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 and then turning bearish, this one's moving straight up looking bullish, bullish, bullish. This one could resolve and just flat out be bullish. <laughs> So looking for a break above this 113 to 115 area, then you'll know that the bears are going to cover. I'd uh, get bullish at that point. Otherwise, look for breaks down below these levels to take your shorts intraday. From a daily standpoint, these thick blue lines are my new channel, just like we saw on the Dow, and these are holding very nicely right now. Let's see if that makes a difference going forward, but a break up and over 1120. Uh, we'll probably start to put a damper on these particular trend lines here unless the bears can get it back down and close it below that. Uh, there are some people calling for an exhaustion move here. That means that it will move up and above this channel, completely exhaust itself to the upside before rolling over and completely tumbling to the downside. But uh, it's all speculation on that move as of yet. Nothing's broken from the bull side. So a break over 11.15 looks like there's more covering to come. Weekly, don't care, uh, except to say that, <laughs> don't care, okay, except to say that this, notice how this candle started to the right, this one came up and retouched it, and I said, would not be surprised to see this start to the right, move up, and maybe re-tag this area up in here during the course of the week. That would put us at new highs, but would still stop us from, you know, kind of breaking up and over this this lower trend line, which is what we've been watching for a while. So let's get, well, it's only Monday, got a long ways to go, uh, but I'm just showing you some different scenarios. Fix moving down right into a support level on the daily, on the weekly, back to the dotted line as we talked about. Breaks below those levels put us back into here. Obviously leading to a further move up in the markets. Apple with a nice day up. This is a tough one to play here on the gap.